And I'm back. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to, oh my God, is this part six of my Photoshop collage project? Uh, tomorrow, by the way, I know that some of you are listening to this live, but tomorrow is the deadline for the Case Western Reserve University Cleveland Museum of Art Open Source Collage Contest. And while it's only open to members of the CWRU, Cleveland Institute of Music, and Cleveland Institute of Art students, it is still a great project. It's one that I've been doing for years, and I figured I'd document it anyway. Also, it's a great time for me to shout out how amazing the Cleveland Museum of Art open source collection is. So if you haven't followed up now to the point, here we are to this is my giant funky collage. Uh, for those of you who've watched it in the past, I have some good news. I have now set up a second screen, so I should, in fact, be able to see the stream chat as well as Photoshop at the same time. So I won't have to pause every so often asking if anybody can has any questions or anything. I can see you. So if you have any questions or you just want to say hi, I'm watching in the window right now, and I would love to hear your feedback. Only if it's positive. If it's negative, y'all can go to hell. I'm in a good mood. I have a full can of Barks. I've got a giant thing of popcorn, which I'm going to try not to munch in your ear, and we're going to see where we left off. So where do we left off? Now, interestingly enough, there is one modification since part five, and that is I've upgraded Photoshop. I was using Photoshop Creative Cloud 2017, and due to some turns of fate, I am now using Photoshop Creative Cloud 2019, which is great, but it's also frustrating because they moved some of the icons and I'm trying to remember where things are. Um, so it's kind of a fun one, but we'll see how this goes. So let's take a look, fit screen. Here is the entire window. You can see where I've left off. As we recall, I did some fine tune editing. This cloud I edited. Uh, what else did I edit? I edited the gravy boat. Actually, it's the sauce boat. I edited the unicorn, and I had started editing the dragon. I had not finished editing the dragon. I don't think I'm going to go back to the dragon right now. I think I'm going to change directions for a little bit. I think I am going to go and start to edit the horse. Obviously, I need a lot of more fine-tuning before I can go on to some of the other steps. So let's do that. Let's jump on in and fine-tune. Again, this is a little bit strange for me because... Photoshop looks a little different, but it, you know, you, you adapt, you learn. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make sure that my scrubby zoom is not on, which is good. And I'm going to come over here. I'm going to draw a rectangle around my horse, of course, and it zooms in. I can think I can zoom in a little bit more with a click or two. And now we have this wonderful Durr horse. All right, now time to edit. Let me start over at the behind. Um, nothing like a horse's ass. Now, Grab my polygonal lasso tool and start to click. And, oh, am I on the right layer? No, I'm not. I hate when that happens. I'm going to go back to the move tool. I'm going to click on the layer. I've selected the horse. I'm going to go back to my polygonal lasso tool, which, again, is like a regular, la is like a regular lasso tool, but you click and hold and choose polygonal lasso tool. And I'm going to start to work my way around the tail. Excellent. The funny part is, is that while I'm doing this, I actually was thinking earlier today how much I was looking forward to streaming and for some strange reason started singing Row, Row, Row Your Boat because it's gently down the stream, which I don't think was the intention for this, but I figured I would that would be better than my horse joke. I have a lot of horse jokes. Um, I'm only going to tell one. So here's the story. There was this young horse trainer and he had a problem. And the problem was, is that birds started building their homes on the hair on the back of the horse's neck. This is very strange. And he tried everything and he went to see the old horse trainer. And he told the old horse trainer, I have this problem. And the problem, of course, is, is that there's this hair on the back of my horse's neck. Uh-oh. Very hard to edit hair, so we'll stop for a moment. And for some strange reason, these birds are building their nests in it. And he told them that what you do is you grab some baker's yeast and you sprinkle it in the hair. And of course, he did it and it worked. And he said, wow, that was amazing. How does that work? And he goes, well, everybody knows that yeast is yeast and nest is nest and never the main shall tweet. And with that, I lost all of my followers. All right. Now, 
oops, let's go back out of here for a moment and realize that this is actually a little bit more of a challenge. It's going to be hard to figure out exactly where I want to put this. So I'm actually going to skip ahead. I'm just going to avoid it for a moment. I'm going to come over here and uh, go to the easy parts. And I'm doing that because as I do this, I'm going to the easy parts first, not because I want to avoid the hard parts, but because when I'm using the hard parts, I'm going to have to make decisions. I'm really going to be carving into the engraving and I'm going to be making sort of a new aesthetic decision. And I do this along the way. Even here, I have to decide whether or not I'm going to go all the way into the into the white or whether I'm going to uh, come back and create almost like a little bit of a black outline, which you can do with the engravings. There's usually enough data for that. But as I'm doing this, I want to figure out what my aesthetic is first. I want to go over and really decide what everything else looks like. So when I do make these decisions, it's in a context. And I'd rather make a, a more difficult decision in a context where the other choices are laid out in front of me than to make that decision and then realize that I kind of have to live with it. Uh, and that's what's going to happen here. So give me a second as I come around, come around the nose. Uh -huh. And ooh, here's a good one. He's got that. He's got the teeth open. There's the teeth. Look at that. All right, come around here. He's got the mouth. I'm not going to go up like this. That would be a mistake. I'm going to leave that there, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to go around and around and around and around. And again, there's always that question of how far do you go, and the answer is. I teach game design, so I view this as sort of a press your luck opportunity. And I'm pressing my luck here because the further I go, the more I'm risking that I'm going to make a mistake and waste my time. But I'm also realizing that there's this really strange sense of satisfaction to do a larger piece versus a smaller piece. So I'm going to keep going. Also, there's that sense of getting a groove. And I am getting a nice groove here. And again, even you see here, I'm, I'm making a decision. Like I've, I could go up and down and up and down, but instead I'm going to go, no, I'm just going to create a basic shape. And I'm creating that shape. The same thing over here. Instead of going all the way in, I'm going to sort of keep creating that sort of black outline there. I think that black outline makes sense. And uh, keep going, keep going. And again, if you're listening, I can see you in the chat room. So by all means, say hi, ask questions, tell me what you want to see next, tell me what kind of jokes you want to hear me tell, what songs you want to hear me sing. <clears throat> I will not be singing any songs, except for Row, Row, Your Boat. All right, that's good. I, I felt it. I felt that was as far as I could go. And let's come over here and back out for the big reveal. So how does that look? Beautiful. That's actually look. It actually looks pretty good. I kind of like how it's kind of thinner there. It's got that black outline. So I'm gonna keep going. So that's what's gonna happen for the next couple of minutes. No reason for me to meander and ramble. I'm just gonna get in there. New Photoshop apparently has some shortcut keys that I'm not aware of. I'm gonna meander and get in there. And see what's going on. Now that little line there, by the way, is from the drawing underneath. I could do this on a solid colored background if I needed to for the deletion, but I'm actually okay right now. So there we go. And again, I'm probably being a little overkill on this. I tend to be very, very, very specific, but you'd be surprised at how much you get away with as long as there aren't really horribly horribly sharp angles as long as you don't do something where there's like a really obvious cut cut and again for some of you you want the obvious cut cut some of you are going to go that's exactly my aesthetic i want to look like i was using scissors and if that's what you're looking for then go for it but i don't have to go in and out of there i think i can just kind of come around and sort of embrace that curve whether the black line is thin or thick i think it's going to work and you kind of get this. It kind of becomes sort of an instinct as to 
where the curvature is. It's kind of like a weird sort of tracing, but the computer couldn't do it. Like the computer isn't, I'm not following a contour that the computer can see. I'm following a contour that you kind of see the, you can start, you can start to see it, right? You can start to see what the artist left behind um, and probably how the artist was doing it in the first place. But it is just very strange how it starts, you start to get a feel for it and you start making things thicker and thinner sort of by, you know, by, by touch. Now the question is, is how much am I going to come around here? And I don't know yet. There we go. There we go. Again, I'm using that shadow. Now here's a good one. Do I go this way or do I just say, screw it? You'll never notice that I cut that little bit off. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, screw it. And so this little bit of, of uh, hair on the, the leg is going to give me a really good example of the kind of tone I'm going to set when I do the main a little bit later on. And that's exactly why I skipped to do the main. Because when I do these pieces, it'll allow me to get a, a sense of, A, doing it on a smaller scale first, and B, really figuring out what it's gonna, what's needed for what it's going to look like. If I make a mistake down the leg, it's not going to be in the world, uh, or it's not going to be as noticeable as when I do other things. So what's kind of fun here is, is, as you can see, there's another leg sticking out, and that is the knight. And we actually we have to get rid of the knight altogether. So I'm just going to come over here and just keep slicing and say goodbye or even better, good night. <laughs> I'm on a tear tonight. All right, let's keep going. Let's see how far I can get with this. And again, the, doing the engraving is a very different exercise. If you watched what I was doing with the uh, ceramic, the ceramic, I was really working around the dimensionality of the highlights and things. But here, I'm really working around the dimensionality of this really nice black outline that the engraver has kind of put in place. Now, I, I'm going to stop here for a second because, again, I've got to ask myself this question. Do I go over or under or through? And the answer is I'm just going to keep, I'm going to keep sort of building this. I'm not going to go crazy. I do want to get around I want to get around the hoof, but that was a, that was nasty. That was that would have been a, a really bad cut. But like, I don't need to keep that line. I need to keep this line. And again, when I say need, it's more of like, what does the, what does the drawing demand, right? Like, even if you look at the um, the horseshoes here, if I were to cut the the hoof, without this horseshoe line, you'd be fine. Like, it would not be a problem. So we, we, but I've just, it's not the end of the world to keep it. So I'm going to keep it. But if I decided not to keep it, it again, would not be terrible. All right. As I keep going. And there we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. I think I'll stop right there before I know I gear up. I don't want to veer back up too far and come over this way, this way. Oops. Oh, I got that. This way. I, I enjoy, also, I'm doing this the payoff way. I do this for myself. I don't have to do this. There, again, various people do this various ways. I do this so I can zoom out and give myself the, oh, yeah, look at that. That was that beautiful little delete, and it makes me feel good. And again, if I wanted to get rid of things underneath, I could undo the tower and see how that looks so far. And we're doing fine. All right. I'm looking at the chat window, see who's there. Anybody there? Oh, look at all those people waving. All right, good. If you've got anything to say, jump in and say hi. Otherwise, I'm heading back in. Oof, this good-looking horse, though. You know, what I like when I'm working with open source imagery is that I can constantly think about like, yeah, I'm using this now, but maybe I'm going to use it for something else later as well. Like I'm not wasting my time. This horse is going to be sort of part of my arsenal of graphics in my possession. Now, um, um, yeah, looking at the horses, um, well, whatever that is, um, 
we're just going to start cutting and we'll see what happens. I really don't want to get too detailed, but again, if that's where it is, that's where it is. If you're wondering, I was just pointing to the horse's junk because I think that's what that was. And if they weren't afraid to engrave it, why should I be afraid to cut around it? This isn't the first time I've had to deal with things like that. It turns out that this happens all the time. Whenever you're working with imagery, you're going to be working with people who are not afraid of anatomy. And so if they're not afraid of creating the anatomy, you should not be afraid of editing the anatomy. The trick, of course, is, is what the hell are we looking at? And I mean that in a very funny way. So one of the things, of course, that happens with engravings is that the engraving is usually based on an illustration. And the person who did the engraving is frequently not the person who made the illustration. So you may find yourself in a situation where one person drew it and then the other person copied it. And the person copying it may not exactly know what the intention, like spatially was, the person drawing it. So you're playing like this, again, very strange game of telephone where someone's copying something that somebody else saw. Uh, I love those those things because what you end up seeing is a really weird senses of um, drifts in terms of perspective or in terms of layering or in terms of, you know, what this person saw versus what that person saw. So, all right, I think um, I will come around here like this and do what it looks like was done. I think I'm reading this right. And if I'm not reading this right, I hope someone in the chat window goes, no. All of a sudden, it's a Jewish horse. But um All right. Come around. And the funny part is, is that in context, with the backdrop, that may look normal. When I hit delete in a minute, it may look like, oh, my God, that's all you see. And if that's the case, then I may have to neuter the horse, which is fine because... This is a very old horse, and I'm assuming it's no longer with us. I'm going to balderdize the horse. Or maybe I need to grab a fig leaf. So much concern about this horse. The funny part is, is that until I, like a, a minute ago, I had not even looked there. And yet, there it is, there it was, there it will be. Here I have, I mean, to talk about it. Um, that it happens. I once did a project where I spent quite a bit of time editing Jesus' navel and Jesus' nipples. And it he's shirtless, so it's not sacrilegious. If you're religious, it is a fact of life, is that somebody was drawing it going like, what are we going to make these navels look like? What's the navel look like? What are we going to make these nipples look like? That is just anatomy, folks. All right, now... Getting the, getting the hair around the hooves. So do I go all the way around or do I just come around here and sort of shape it? And I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to sort of make a decision about sort of shaping it. And yes, technically, if you look carefully, I have given this hoof a haircut. But in some ways, they were a little bit more errant errors than I would want. And even now, I'm kind of coming around, knowing that if I have to go back in, I can go back in. What I don't want, I would always say it's better to cut off too little than too much, especially when you're at this phase. Like, I'm not going to get in there. Like, I'm okay with that. And all right, so we come over here, here. How are we over here? Oh, yeah, we got a lot done over here. Over here. All right, now let's zoom out and see what I have done. What have I wrought? And voila. Mm. All right, that doesn't look weird. All right, the horse penis is fine, but what about this? I don't know how I feel about that. And that's when we have to go through and start making some very strange decisions. All right, what am I going to do? Let's zoom in. Let's zoom in and say, this is accurate, but it's just, I, I don't like it. So I'm going to quickly make a decision and see if this decision stands up. And I'm going to come over here. 
and just kind of curve in and say, if I do that, will that look weird? And the answer is no, it doesn't. I freehand kind of trimmed the hair, I, which is why it's good to know, because if I can do that here, that means when I get up here, I'll be in a little bit better of a situation. Yay. Or as the horse is going to say, nay, I'm really, I'm terrible tonight. I don't know why any of you are watching me. All right, let's come over here and click, click, click. I see I see keep going dun 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 I don't know that. Yeah. And definitely want to do this little spot in the legs. Yeah, that felt good. All right, now. Mm, now it's time for the horse's ass. Where to start? Where to start? All right, I'm going to start here. I'm going to start there because there's all those those like stray hairs there and I have to decide whether I'm going to keep them or not. And I kind of have to keep them because they kind of curl over, but then I also don't have to keep them because if I come in like this, it'll have like a weird line effect there, but it won't be sort of like devastating to the whole thing. Now that's a straight line. So I got to be careful not to do that. And what I need to do is I need to bring this over a little bit and I'm going to cancel this and bring this over so I can see it sort of in the middle of my screen and decide where I'm going to start. So I'm going to come over here. And, you know, and I, again, I was laughing because people were asking me, they're like, how many hours are you going to spend on this? And the answer is, I'm doing a serious job. I mean, it might be a silly composition with semi-randomly chosen items, but I am going to do a serious enough job that I can say that this is done. I know I spent time building that composition, so I should spend time editing the images. I'm going to spend time editing the images. So I'm going to spend time um, building, you know, we haven't even done the other fine tuning yet. And that would be things like the color and the contrast, uh, shifting colors, shifting all sorts of other types of effects that we can have. Now, I could come down a little bit and then go back up, which is what I think I'm going to do here. But I'm also going to try to make a decision about just kind of creating some sort of a, a flowing haircut. This happens a lot. People will send me their photos and they go, can you get rid of my frizzy hair? And they're like, I'm like, you're not going to like it. And what I end up doing to get rid of the frizzy hair is, is I end up shaping their hair. Uh, I can't just get rid of a, a, a wisp of hair. I mean, you can, but for the most part, you know, fuzzy hair is fuzzy hair. If you really care about what it's going to look like, use some flipping gel. Um, and some people do, and then after other people go, can you cut my hair to make it look like I was wearing gel? They actually never say, can you cut my hair so it looks like I was wearing gel? That's just what you do. And uh, it can be pretty flippin' funny, especially when there's a lot of air in hair. It's usually like right towards the top of somebody who's got a big fuzzy fuzzy haircut, or it's uh, the, the, their split ends when they've got this giant mound of hair, and it's always like they paid attention to the top and the sides, but they never figured out where it was going, which happens more often than not. I hate editing people's hair. Bald people are great. And it's not just because I'm losing mine. It's just, it really does. It's kind of funny when you start looking at it. And you look at all the damn shines on their heads. You're like, wow, you have a shiny forehead. And you're thinking to yourself, do I have a shiny forehead? Why didn't anyone tell me to, you know, get the, cut the shine down on my forehead? Which is like a serious consideration. Like you get back from a trip and you're like, oh my God. All right. So now, since I cut the fur off the one, am I going to need to cut the fur off the other? I don't even know if this is fur. I don't even, it's not fur. It's like hair. Um, I think I can keep this one. Let's take a look. And we'll see if it balances. Like I'm going to come over here and I'm going to, ooh, do I, do I go back out? Or do I just say, you know what? I'm going to come around like this. And this is wrong. Like, I know this is wrong, but I'm going to start here so I have something to work from. Just like I come over here and realize I could probably get a little bit more off of this one. Oops. See that corner right there? I don't want that corner. I want to keep going a little bit at a time so that I never see something huge and angled. All right? And then, voila. Zoom out a bit, delete. 
Uh, okay, that came out nicely. I got a double check in there. I can't believe I have to double check in there. I like the way this came out. I haven't gotten down there yet. Um, I probably could go a little smoother there. So I'm going to zoom in and show you. And that's one of the reasons, again, why I stopped along the way. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to... And again, if you'll notice, I'm trying to cut, I'm trying to not create right angles or not create really, really sharp angles, but I am still trying to keep, create something that feels a little curved. And the cool thing is the, zoom, the, the more you zoom in, the less these angles make a difference. Um, uh, not great, I'm not happy. So let's go and grab our uh, window and our history. And let's take a look at what this looks like. So from that to that, from that to that, was that an improvement? No. Why wasn't it an improvement? Um, because it looks like I cut some stuff off here, which is what I did. So what I really need to do is maybe just cut a little bit over here or cut up a little bit. I think this part was good. I think there's just a couple little things I have to do to trim. And I think one of the things I have to do to trim is, is get that part nice. So if I were to come over here and, you know, get under there, I spend so much time on this. Someone's going to go, you won't be able to see it. You might, you might be right, but I just, it's, it's a passion to do this right. So if I take this, if I take care of that baby. So now that I've got a little bit of an undercut there, and then I think over here, I probably could shape this under a little bit. And if that works, that if I come over here, oh, that, that edge is really bad right there. But again, I went from this to that. And so part of that's better. Like this is better, but that's worse. So I got to keep working. And how do I keep working? I'm going to, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to realize that fur is fur. And again, I know it's hair. It just looks furry to me because I have a dog that kind of has this coloring and she kind of looks like a Wookiee. And so something very furry about that. So that, I can deal with that. Yeah, I, you know, and again, I have to say, is it perfect? No, but it's close. And is my eye draw immediately towards that? The answer is no. So I've got to fix this and this and move on to the next one. Yay. All right, so now let's get in there. And I'm going to have to go back around this tail. But I don't want to go back all the way around the tail. If I bite into it, it'll be noticeable. So I have to kind of curve into it. Right? And it's kind of a fun one because, all right, so if I kind of come over here, I'm going to stop like that and go, all right, that, oops, oh my God, I don't want to hit search. I meant control D, not control F. It was my deselect tool. You remember my deselect tool? Every time you select, you want to get rid of it, you're going to hit deselect. And we can hit deselect by going to control D. I warned you that, that control keys can be a little dangerous. And my, my deselect one is my, one of my favorites because in one program, in, in Photoshop, of course, it's always control D. But in another program, and I think in the early in the early versions of uh, in the early versions of Flash, and it may still be this way. I don't teach Flash anymore because there is no Flash. It's animate. But in the early days of that, um, Control D was duplicate, and I used to love the fact that you're trying to get rid of a selection, and all of a sudden you have two of something. You're like, no, that is exactly the opposite of what I didn't want. Instead of actually selecting something, the last thing I want is a clone of it. All right, now. You're sitting here going, like, where is that? And you're like, okay, it's kind of a knot that goes out for this poor horse. All right, so I'm going to come around this way. And, and now I'm just being whatever. And by whatever, I mean I'm being loose where I know that I'm, I'm just capturing enough. The reason is, is that I don't quite know what's going to happen here. 
So I wanted to remove that because this is fine, but you can see that around the knot, I got a little bit too, too angular. So I'm gonna have to zoom in. And matter of fact, I'm gonna have to zoom in on this entire lower part to really see what's going on. So this is curved and actually there is a little bit of an angle here, but I wanna trim that edge off. I want it to be kind of around like that and see if that, just again, that little bit of, that little bit of edge comes off really nicely. I'm going to come in here a little bit like this and da, 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 da. and again, you really can't see where it's going. So I'm mostly just you realizing that you're going to see through some of this. So that's pretty good, but it's a hard one. This is probably the, this is going to be harder than the main because part of me is like, you know what? I don't need any of this. I, part of me says, come in here. Oops. Part of me says, come in here from afar. Get in here like that. Oops. Yep, I keep backing it up. Come in here like that. And then make a funky pattern on the part that doesn't have any background to it, which is this. And then say, you know what? This is enough. I don't even need that. Um, yes, I'm cutting off a whole wisp of fur of hair there. But if I do this, that actually works. And it works a little bit here. So this works nicely. I probably could come in a little bit more. I'm going to have to come up. I'm going to have to come up right here. Because I want to get rid of the the hatch marks because the hatch marks make it very obvious that that sort of background I keep hitting control F my apologies um, but that background is so the control D and then as I come over here I'm gonna again make sure that I'm being strategic with my clicking my strategic with my clicking realizing that I'm sort of making it up. And what I'm really trying to do is create sort of, uh, and I'm going to say this and someone's going to yell at me, but I'm really trying to make a ponytail. That's really what this is. I mean, it's just a ponytail. And you're like, well, does, does that look any good? And the answer is, yeah, it looks pretty good. Like it actually holds up. I mean, um, if I felt it needed to, I could trim a little bit later. Now I'm going to take a quick little swig of my soda. Any questions? Any comments? Excellent. There's a swig of my soda. And uh, I am streaming, right? Yeah, I think I'm streaming. All right. Now, the main. So part of the main is going to be easy. Part of the main is going to be uh, exactly what you want it to be. Part of the main is I'm going to come on in and I'm going to say, this is the shape of my main and then really what I'm be looking for is this very subtle black line that is actually here if you look carefully for it there is a black line it's kind of what the engravers were working from you're hoping and you can see it I'm not going to dip in there just yet I could dip around but I'm not going to I'm just going to go for the basic overall shape because what will end up happening is is if you get that basic overall shape you're going to start seeing what reads right and what doesn't, what needs to be edited out and what doesn't. You constantly have to sort of change. It's actually say it's it's a balancing act between constantly changing directions and create and not creating those tiny, pointy, pointy, pointy things that make it look very, very artificial. Unless that's your aesthetic, your aesthetic. If you're and again, you know, I'm trying to be a little bit more organic. I know a lot of people are going to go like you are spending way too much time. The fun part about it is, is I I can I can do this. All right. Yes, I'm cutting off a little bit. I know. I know. But I'm almost there. Look, I'm, not, I'm, I'm past the ears. I'm not past the ears. I'm getting close to the ears.
And yet, as you remember, right now my hand is on my mouse and I keep clicking and adding these little um, points, but my other hand is on my keyboard and I'm hitting backspace whenever I make a mistake. So if you, if you were to see me right now, you see my left hand is on my mouse being very, very steady. And my right hand is literally sitting on my backspace key so that if I click, I'm literally gonna like, if I click wrong, I can just go immediately backwards. And it and it's like I did a second ago, and it becomes a second hand, uh, so that you don't have to worry about being perfect because you know that you're right there. And if you don't, if you're not right there, then what'll end up happening is is that you won't do it. And there we go. And again, I'm just trying to make sure this looks organic. Up, 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 and away. Well, that's a lot of that horse's mane. All right, you ready to see if I did any good? Bam and bam. So here, this worked out great. Like this part is nice. This part is nice. You know, I could get in a little bit in there. I could get a little bit in there, but like you don't notice it. It's not something huge. Um, and even when I zoom in, it reads fairly right. I, I'm probably going to do this just because I'm insane. And again, I always start on the outside of my cut, just sort of give myself a little bit of an anchor point so I know where I'm working from and realize that I can where I'm sort of going to, and then I get rid of that, Ugh, like that, that goes beautiful. That's nice, and now all I gotta do is get rid of this guy. This guy sitting right here. Ooh, the worst of it. So what am I gonna do? I really wanna come up this way. I mean, I really wanna come up this way, but I know that this is gonna be everything right here. And I wanna come up this way because in my dream, I come over here, I come over here, and then I realize that I can cut some of it off, but it's going to be beautiful. And in some ways, I'm taking a big risk. Again, I'm looking for the big contour. You gotta remember this was drawn by somebody. It was drawn by somebody using a, you know, this is engraving. So this was drawn by somebody using some sort of a stylus on metal. All right. So it's it's there should be literally something to follow. And then I'm gonna come around here and just try to get off that little bit of inconsistent part that I added earlier. And let's see what this does. I'm not going to zoom out. It worked, right? Look at that. Look at that. That little tuft there. Now, that little tuft there works. Now, I'm going to turn off my background elements for a moment so I can kind of see what's going on. Having the background off doesn't hurt. So I can kind of see that that little tuft works, that little tuft works. Even that little point works, that little point. I could... Am I in the right layer? Yes. I'm, I, that's... Uh, you, you, you know, funny part is, is you can see what I'm clicking, but you can't see where I'm looking. I was looking over here to make sure I was in the right layer. And that's why we have undo. Yeah. Uh-oh. What's that? Bit of horse. Look at that. I got a horse. Yay. I'm so excited. Round of applause, everybody. Uh, it's so different when you take the background out. So what have I cut out so far? I've cut out the horse, the boat, the unicorn, a cloud, and a half a dragon. All right. Obviously, I would like to speed this up a little bit, but I'm going to come over here. I'm going to add the tower, and I'm going to get rid of the horse because the horse is on top of the tower. And let's see how quickly I can get this tower done. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Do I still got you? Yep, I still got you there. So now, as you remember last time, I was trying to use the magic wand tool and it was not working for me. Um, kind of come back over here, use the magic wand tool. If I set it to contiguous, that means it will try not to search on the inside. I click this and wow, look at that. It's actually closer than you think, but it's still absolutely wrong. So if I come over here and make it a 10, um, that's pretty cool. And you have to ask yourself, did it grab too much? Did it grab too little? 
even if you get the right number, you can actually click in different parts because that 10 is a tolerance. And so the tolerance is going to be different if you click here versus if you click here, you know, see like they right there. Like, did I ruin any of it? And that's where I have to look into it. Now, I really want to show you a great example of tolerance. I just, this, this isn't it yet. And so I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to wait um, because the inside and the outside are too similar. Tolerance isn't going to do it. I'm going to try the quick selection tool again to see if anybody, quick selection tool again, to see if it's at all happy. Um, and the answer is, mm, see, it kind of ate in a little bit. So I'm not, again, I'm not happy. So let's not do it that way. And let's go back to old school. Everybody happy so far? Everybody following along? Good. Let's get into this now. Okay. You're going to ask myself how, how you're going to ask me how in the world can you keep that little bit of a of a line? And the answer is uh, carefully. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to keep an outline. I'm going to outline the outline. Because again, there's a little bit of color there. And it doesn't take much for it to show up. Matter of fact, when we go to do our color adjustment later, you're going to see how much we can actually make this pop without actually doing all of this. Um, but I want to do this part first. So, again, it's never going to be perfect because it's not perfect. I'm not perfect. And I have a, a motto I like to share with everybody. Uh, nobody's perfect, but that's okay because perfection is not our metric. Our metric is very different. And there's one very important metric that I want to share with you. There's one way that you can evaluate and self-evaluate your, your work, and that is very importantly this. Does it look good? Does it look good? Are you happy with the way it looks? And if you're not happy with the way it looks, you can either change the way it looks, or you can change your definition of happy. I uh, remember years ago, I was looking at one of my brother's paintings, and I really liked it, and he really didn't. I said, man, I really like, uh, I really like that painting. He goes, it's not very good. I, go, I think it looks great. And he goes, yeah, but you didn't know what I was trying to paint. And he meant it in two ways. One, he meant it in the sense that he was painting a still life and I didn't know what the still life looked like. And the other he was talking about is that what he was drawing didn't match his mind's eye vision. And part of learning to use Photoshop is doing that. Could I be doing more precision work right now? Yes, you already saw that before. I could zoom in and I could go dit, 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 and I could be here for hours. The goal here is not to be here for hours, and the goal here is to actually make it match my vision. Luckily, I've done this enough to know that leaving a little bit of a white border on the outside or you know, cutting close but not too close is actually going to work for me here. Um, what? How do I know that? And look at that one. It's going to be hard. Like, where do I cut it? I know it based on experience. I know it based on trial and error. I'm not going to cut around here. I'm going to realize that's an implied roof line. Um, and I'm going to keep going up until here. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to hit delete. And you can see that for all my jagged edges, that the jagged edges in one direction, not matching the jagged edges in the other direction, actually kind of holds up and we're, we're doing pretty well. While this looks more complex than the horse, in some ways it, it really isn't because what I'm mostly doing is, is trying to create a new geometry around which there is this sketch. Um, again, I'm, ah, oh, I made a mistake, hate that. Undo, undo, undo. Um, but like, you know, which of the sketchy lines do you keep? That's really up to you. I'm trying to make sure that the cuts feel as sketchy as everything else. I thought I saw somebody ask a question. They did not. But I want to make sure, like, I, I want to keep the little squiggles there that sort of give the outline of the of this. Now, the contest is due tomorrow. Obviously, I think this collage will not be done tomorrow, but I'm still going to finish this collage, not tomorrow. So if I don't finish the collage, do not think I'm going to give up on you. I think digital collaging is a very useful skill to have. I think that at the end of the day, spending an enormous amount of time with the polygonal lasso tool is, uh, 
something that everybody should do. I hope everybody does eventually spend time with your polygonal lasso tool. It is your friend, unless you've got the steadiest hand in the world, in which case you could, again, use the eraser tool or, better yet, the actual lasso tool. Again, I just, you know, I'm not very good at this with the actual lasso tool. I love the polygonal lasso tool. The uh, friend of mine was talking about what, whether you should use any uh, pen or tablet, and it happens a lot, again. My students get all excited when they see the tablet. And I was thinking about that guy who goes to the doctor and says, Doc, will I, will I be able to play the piano? And he goes, yes. He goes, funny, I can't play it now. You know, If you know how to draw, a tablet is the greatest thing since sliced bread. If you do not know how to draw, it's literally a simulation for a pen. So just because you've used a pen to, to you know, write doesn't mean you can use a pen to draw. And if you can't use a real pen to draw, there's no way in hell you're going to use a virtual pen to draw. On the converse side of this, one of my old professors said that using a mouse was like drawing with a potato. Uh, and yeah, he's right. It is like drawing with a potato. Matter of fact, uh, that's fine. I think at the end of the day, when it comes to editing images, I edit images pretty damn well with a potato. Uh, and yes, I'm cutting off that little bit of a, of a, of a line there. But what's fun is, is we're getting close. And I don't have to do the part that I already took off the screen. Because remember, I made an aesthetic decision. Um, if I really, really, really was clever, I would go through and, and realize that there are parts of this image that are going to be obscured or occluded, and I can delete those as well. I, or I could choose not to outline those as well. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with this area here, so I'm just going to keep editing. And uh, I'm going to go down here, and then I have to make some interesting cut decisions. Oh, yeah, that makes me happy. Mm, that doesn't make me happy. Let's come back over here. Yeah, I want it to come out a little bit more. So how do I do that? First, I undid until the selection. So again, I'm going to hold the, uh, uh, the hold the Alt key down, which makes it a negative selection. And I can come over here, and I can eat into what I've made. And what I'll probably do is eat into it a little bit this way. And that allows me to see what I've got. And I've hit Delete. Now this piece feels a little bit better, and I may even come up this way, get rid of that little bit of a black bit, but keep, yeah, that feels a little bit better. All right, now the bottom. I don't have to do this. I have to do this. So what am I going to do on the bottom? All right, on the bottom, I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to look for that one big sketch line. Sketchy, 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 sketchy. Oh, there's people in this drawing. I never realized there were people in this drawing. Sketchy up, 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 and then I'm going to come down around. And I can decide which way is, which way is down. So I'm going to come over here and leave that like that. And again, I'm just making decisions about pencil lines that I'm keeping versus ones that I'm throwing away. Delete that. So we've got this over here. That looks pretty good. And then all I got to do is the other half. Let's see how the other half lives. Yay. And again, for the first part, it's pretty easy because I'm just trying to hug the pencil lines without going crazy. Oop, that was bad. And then for the second one, well, let's just see how far I can go with this. Notice I'm zoomed in a bit. So do I want to go up or down? I think I'm going to go down here. I could have gone either way. I really like doing this. And if you do it long enough, you'll love that no, you may not. I think it's kind of the fun thing about any sort of digital media is that we all have our own threshold for what it is that we enjoy. 
some people like, you know, you can get in the real zone of, oh my God, I've been editing this one image for so long. And some people are like, how can you do this? You know, how can you sit in a room alone and just edit a flipping image? To which I remind them, I'm not alone. I have you people. And by you people, I mean the voices in my head. No, by you people, I mean the people that I'm streaming for, I know are sort of watching this. And you're like, but what if nobody's watching you? And the answer is someone's going to watch eventually. All right, I'm going to quit right now that's that's good that was nice now I've got to figure out how to get up here look how close I'm getting I just got to get past this little sketchy area here yeah kind of keep coming around what's neat is, is again you want to keep the sketchy area but you don't want to keep every bit of spare line because it's going to interfere later. But that line I have to keep because that line is part of the... So it's kind of weird when you go around a line and you're like, I'm just keeping the one black line? And the answer is, yeah, but you can't be right next to it. You still got to give yourself a little bit of room to breathe because later on that white's going to kind of blend in or that, oh, no. Okay, so what do I do? What do I do? I, I double-click too quickly and it's going to delete this part. Well, I'm going to come over here and remember I told you before, hit the Alt key and just go, nope, I don't want that part. Oop. So now I can hit the Control key again or the Shift key again, which adds the selection so I can come back in and just keep adding to the selection. Remember, the only two things that make a selection go away is by making a new selection or by deselecting. So if you pause for a moment and you're like, oh, my God, that's the wrong selection, don't draw a new one. Don't deselect. Go ahead and modify the selection using the shift key to add the selection. And again, you can do that with, you can mix and match. I could use a rectangular marquee as well as a polygonal lasso or as well as all the rect all the, the selection tools allow you to go to a different selection tool and use the addition, which is the shift key, or the subtraction, which is the alt key together at the same time. Obviously not alt and shift at the same time. So if I do this. Look at that. And of course, I've got this little hole here. So I'm going to fill that. And then I'm going to stop and hit delete and see what I'm left with. I feel good there. And again, don't be afraid to stop and delete. Again, keep your history window up. If you make a mistake, go back a couple steps. Because uh, remember, the whenever you hit, um, after you make a selection, you're going to hit delete, which is one action. Uh, and then you're going to hit control D so you don't see the... Um, the little dancing dots around the selection and that's another one so when you go back you just you don't just go back one you go back two you go back to when the area was selected but before you deleted it which is uh, two steps back because one step back would just be when you deselected and you want to again be able to compare with the deselection the deselected deleted version with the selected undeleted version which is useful uh, just an FYI, for those of you who are listening, I'm probably going to take a uh, pause for the cause after I finish this particular image. And again, you're like, how close do I have to get? And you're, you're like, well, we haven't edited this image yet. And this, we could probably turn most of this into a nice blend of some sort. Or the other part of it is, is we we might not, we might like the aesthetic. We might like this idea of coming through and seeing it all. But we're getting close again. Uh, at least we think we're getting close. If I brought up the navigator, we could see how close we are, but I'm not doing that because I'm in the mid selection tools. And if I do it wrong, if after all of this, there's still little bits of border I don't like, I can go back and eat into it, but I'll do that only once I realize what the remaining effect of it is. Remember, it's always happening but I can decide what it is I'm going to do at any given moment alright we're getting up there right alright over here ah, look at that we're getting there I'm zoomed in at I'm only at 100% oh that's good
All right, let's see where we're at. Well, we're getting higher and higher. I say we're heading north, but I think we're heading up. Um, but we'll see how this holds together on a different backdrop. Again, we might like the aesthetic of a little bit of a white glow around a little bit of a black pencil mark. Okay, all right, now we got to watch carefully because we've got this thing here. But do we need this thing here? I mean, that's the question is... If I were to come over here and just start cropping, I mean, obviously we're keeping the bell, but just because we don't see the uh, the, the bell ringer. God, I know so many bell ringing jokes. Oh, oh yeah, let's come over here. Yeah, there was a, the, the story of the monk who was in charge of ringing the bells, but he was having problems pulling the rope. So instead, he just hurled his body in front of the bell every day. It became his ongoing tradition. And one day he missed, and he fell out the, way, the window, and he died. As people gathered around asking who he was, somebody goes, um, I don't know his name, but his face sure rings a bell. And, uh, and then... His brother went to came and, and took over the job. And in his honor, he did the same thing where he threw his body into the bell. And he, too, one day went over. And as people gathered around, they asked who he was. And he's like, oh, I don't know. He's a dead ringer for his brother. <laughs> Again, my apologies. I'm in a good mood. I'm in a good mood for bad jokes. That's right. Did you hear about the corduroy pillows? They're making headlines. Yay. All right, now let's see what we got. Let's zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. Yeah, that feels pretty good. That feels pretty good. The only thing that doesn't feel good is that little spot over there, which we'll get to later. Let's put the background back up. See? Look at that. Even with the... Uh, a little bit of white glow, it actually matches the pencil aesthetic, so it holds up, which is what we wanted it to do. And I bring my horse back in, and you can see the horse. So, yeah, we've done quite a few objects here so far. I'm feeling good, feeling good. The bad news is we have quite a few objects to go, so I'm not feeling good. I'm not feeling good. All right, let's see how long I've been going so far. I have been going for, wow, it looks like 57 minutes on this stream. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it a pause. Uh, I will be back a little bit later if... Uh, Please make sure to uh, follow me, like me, all sorts of things. Tell your friends, that kind of good stuff. I'll be back with more Photoshop editing, and we will make this collage work. Once we finish doing all the cutout, 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 we'll then start to work on color, contrast, special effects, and then doing something wonderful and mystical and magical with this background. Again, my name is Jared Bendis, and thanks for watching. <laughs>